Little Shuey took a drink, but he will drink no more. For what he thought was H2O, was H2SO4. That's right, today we're talking about strong and weak electrolytes. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break it. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Asha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. Fu know how we do's it! So Fu, how come you're drinking Brondo now instead of Haterade? It, it's got, it's got electrolytes! What are electrolytes? Do you even know? I, it, uh, it's what they used to make Brondo! So let's get started. Strong and weak electrolytes. A lesson from the acids and bases unit. Electrolytes. Review. An electrolyte dissociates into ions in solution. An electrolyte conducts electricity in solution. Acids, bases, and salts are all electrolytes. Strong electrolytes. Strong electrolytes completely ionize in solution. In other words, all molecules have dissociated into ions 100%. If we look at HCl aqueous, it'll yield H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous in solution. Every single HCl will break down into ions. So there are no molecules present in solution, only ions. This leads to better conductivity compared to weak electrolytes of equal concentration. If you take a look at the image to the right, we have an example of a strong electrolyte. You can see the light bulb is lit up, so we know that that solution is conducting. If you take a look at the particle diagram below, you'll notice every particle is an ion. We no longer have any molecules. That means everything has completely ionized, and that's what a strong electrolyte does. Weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes partially ionize in solution. In other words, some molecules have dissociated into ions, but far from 100%. Although the molecules are still dissolved, they have not all broken down into ions. If you take a look at our example here, we have HF aqueous becoming H plus ions and F minus ions. Now in this example, we have an arrow going both ways, meaning that we don't completely have all ions and we still have some of those molecules left. In the previous slide, we had a one-way arrow. For a strong electrolyte, that meant that all of our molecules became ions. Weak electrolytes like we have here, they're not completely ionizing. There are usually more molecules present than ions. This leads to lower conductivity compared to strong electrolytes of equal concentration. If we take a look at the image to the right, we see that we are again conducting electricity because the light bulb is lighting up. However, it's not lighting up as brightly as it did on the previous slide. This is because we have a weak electrolyte. If we look at our particle diagram, we see that although we have some ions, we also have molecules present, indicating that we're not 100% ionized. Continuing on with acids, specifically strong acids. Strong acids are 100% ionized. Strong acids have lower pH values than weak acids of equal molarity. That's because they're more acidic. Strong acids are denoted by arrows to the right. So looking at table K, we see that HCl aqueous is hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid. Also, HNO3 aqueous nitric acid and H2SO4 aqueous sulfuric acid. Weak acids. Weak acids are only partially ionized. Weak acids have higher pH values than strong acids of equal molarity. Again though, they're still acidic, so they're still less than seven, they're just a little higher in pH than your strong acids. Weak acids are denoted by the arrows to the right. So taking a look at table K, we have HNO2 aqueous or nitrous acid, we have H2SO3 or sulfurous acid, we have H3PO4 aqueous or phosphoric acid, we have H2CO3 carbonic acid, and HC2H3O2 or ethanoic or acetic acid. You try number one. Which acid will have the higher pH, H2SO4 aqueous or H2SO3 aqueous? Justify your answer in terms of the strength of the acid and the amount of hydrogen ion in solution. Here's a little hint. Remember that a higher pH means it's less acidic. Weak acids have an equilibrium between their molecular form and their ion form. Think of this as a state of balance between the two sides. 
In other words, the ions can go back into their molecule form. So for example, if we have HNO2 aqueous, which is a weak acid, it will be in equilibrium as signified by that double arrow with H plus aqueous and NO2 minus aqueous. In this example, NO2 minus must accept the H plus to reform the HNO2. So imagine the reaction going in the opposite direction and NO2 minus is acting as a bronsted Lowry base accepting the H plus back to form HNO2. We call NO2 minus the conjugate base of HNO2 because of it accepting that H plus. We can also look at the equation this way. Taking a deeper look here, let's go in the forward direction. Let's start with HNO2. Now HNO2 is acting as a bronsted lowry acid. It's actually donating an H plus to H2O. Now because HNO2 loses that H plus and turns into NO2 minus, we say that it's its conjugate. H2O is accepting the H plus here. So since it's accepting, it's acting as a bronsted lowry base. Because water turns into H3O plus on the right, we say that H3O plus is its conjugate. Now let's go in the reverse direction. In the reverse direction, it's the H3O plus that donates an H plus to the NO2 minus to reform HNO2 and H2O. So since H3O plus is donating the H plus, it's a conjugate acid. And because NO2 minus is accepting the H plus, it's a conjugate base. You try number two. Write an equation showing the weak acid HC2H3O2 aqueous reacting with H2O liquid. Label acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base. Feel free to use the picture from the previous slide to help you answer this question. Bases. Let's start with strong bases. Strong bases are 100% ionized, just like strong acids. Strong bases have higher pH values than weak bases of equal molarity. Strong bases are denoted by the arrows to the right. So looking at table L, the top three, so NaOH aqueous or sodium hydroxide, KOH potassium hydroxide, and CaOH2 calcium hydroxide are all considered strong bases. Weak bases. Weak bases are only partially ionized, like weak acids. Weak bases have lower pH values than strong bases of equal molarity. Now we're still talking about bases, so it's a pH above seven, these would just be lower pHs than strong bases. Weak bases are denoted by arrows to the right. So looking at table L, we've got just one weak base, it's NH3 aqueous, aqueous ammonia. You try number three, which base will have the higher pH, NaOH aqueous or NH3 aqueous? Justify your answer in terms of the strength of the base and the amount of hydroxide ion in solution. Little hint, remember that a higher pH means that it's more basic. Weak bases have an equilibrium between their molecular form and their ion form. In the example below, NH4 plus must donate the H plus to reform NH3. We call NH4 plus the conjugate acid of NH3. Let's take a closer look. So let's look a little deeper at this example. First thing I want to point out though is that the internet is not always correct. This image has a single headed arrow. Now if you've been following along, it's at equilibrium, so it should have a double headed arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that extra arrow in on the other side, okay? All right, so we have NH3 reacting with H2O. So NH3 is our bronsted lowry base because it's accepting an H plus from the H2O. So since NH3 accepts that H+, plus, it becomes NH4+, plus, and that means that NH4+, plus is NH3's conjugate, okay? Now H2O, it donated, so that makes it the bronsted lowry acid, which means when it donates it, it becomes OH-, minus, and that means that OH- minus is H2O's conjugate, okay? Going in reverse, we've got NH4+, plus and the OH-, minus, in this case, NH4 is going to donate the H plus back to the OH, meaning that NH4 plus is the conjugate acid, and OH minus, since it's accepting one back, makes it the conjugate base. You try number four. Write an equation showing the weak base 
F minus aqueous reacting with H2O liquid. Label acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base. As a hint, use the equation from the previous slide to help you. We're going to take a look at this interactive visual to help illustrate strong and weak electrolytes. We begin with water. If we look at the equation down at the bottom, it says two H2O equilibrium arrows H3O plus plus OH minus. This represents that water can auto ionize into H plus and OH minus. In this particular visual, we are representing H plus as hydronium ion H3O plus, which you can see when you look at the beaker. We're at a pH of seven, of course. Now let's take a look at the strong acid. Looking at the equation at the bottom, we have, it's a fictional acid by the way, HA plus H2O yields just a single arrow to the right, A minus plus H3O plus. Now notice in the beaker, we have no molecules of HA. We only have A minus and H3O plus ions. That means we are 100% ionized. Notice that our pH is 2, a pretty acidic pH. Let's take a look at a weak acid. Now we have HA plus H2O with equilibrium arrows, leading to A minus plus H3O plus. And looking at our beaker, we see that we do have HA molecules present. We still have A minus and H3O plus ions, but we have both present because this is a weak acid. Notice that the pH is 4.50. Again, it's an acidic pH, but it's not as acidic as our strong acid. Moving on to a strong base, we have our metal hydroxide breaking down into M plus and OH minus, single arrow to the right. And looking at our beaker, we see that we only have ions present. We are completely and 100% dissociated. Our pH is 12, we are basic now, so we have a very high pH. Finally, let's take a look at our weak base. We've got the base represented as B plus H2O. We've got our double arrows there representing equilibrium we get BH plus and OH minus. Looking at the beaker, we do have base present and we also have BH plus and OH minus ions present. We have a mixture of both because we are not 100% ionized. Notice that the pH 9.50 is a basic pH, but it's not as high as in the strong base. It's lower, it's still basic, but not quite as basic because this is a weak base. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on strong and weak electrolytes. There were many sentiments. Today's episode is brought to you by... Rondo's Board of People That Run This Company! For the last time, I'm pretty sure what's killing the crops is this Brondo stuff. The Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. So, wait a minute. What you're saying is that you want us to put water on the crops? Yes. Water. Like out the toilet? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be out of the toilet, but, but yeah, that's the idea. But Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. Okay, look. The plants aren't growing, so I'm pretty sure that the Brondo's not working. Now, I'm no botanist, but I do know that if you put water on plants, they grow. Well, I've never seen no plants grow out of no toilet. Hey, that's good. You sure you ain't the smartest guy in the world? Yeah. So let's go <laughs> Okay, look, you, you want to solve this problem. I want to get my pardon, so why don't we just try it, okay? And not worry about what plants crave. Brando's got what plants crave. God. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they use to make Brando. Yeah, but why do they use them to make Brando? Because Brando's got electrolytes. But we never off, but we zone to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie, like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.